What up friends, Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video. Um, so recently I purchased a lot of Daniel Smith watercolors, like these ones, and I saw a lot of people uh, reviewing uh, these two sets specifically. The, this one is the Essentials 6 set, and there's also the Introductory uh, 3 set, and uh, I really liked uh, this one. I haven't yet tested this one out, but it should look nice. Um, so anyway, I saw a lot of people that reviewed the 6 set, and I don't want to just review it, I want to show you some of the cool uh, color mixes that you can make out of it and see sort of what happens when you mix warm and cool uh, colors. So this is what we're gonna do today, I hope you enjoy it, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So uh, let me just show you what's inside this uh, set, I think there are plenty of YouTube videos showing that, um, but this is basically it. So uh, we have... Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of them are here. So, two blues, uh, one warm and one cool. Um, this one is, yeah, the Thalo blue is the cool one, and we have the French Ultramarine, I believe, yes. And New Gamboge is the cool yellow, as the warm yellow, sorry, and the cool one is Hansa yellow uh, light. And then we have uh, Crudacridone Rose and the Pyrrole Scarlet. So um, these are shown in many, many videos as well as in the great video by uh, Daniel Smith themselves. So what I want to show you is a few interesting mixes that uh, you can produce with them. And I'm just going to start off, I'll show you my palette. It's a bit disgusting at the moment, uh, but this is where I placed most of the Daniel Smith. Um, I need to refill some of them, like this one, the French Ultramarine. Anyway, what we are going to do is start with some blues and reds. So um, I'll choose the to begin with the Phthalo Blue, which is a very, very strong pigment. <clears throat> it's, uh, I think, staining as well. It's leaves a huge mark on my palette actually and I'm just going to show you what it looks like so this is sort of what you get when you use it and if we turn it a little darker so you see it's a very uh, strong paint here and now what I like to do is okay I'm using a uh, cool blue, so let's try to mix it up with a cool red and see what we get. So the cool red is the quinacridone here, quinacridone rose. And I'm just going to mix some of the quinacridone and see what it looks like when mixed together. So this is the quinacridone rose. And when they touch in the middle, this is what you get. Um, let me zoom in just on that part specifically. Good, so I hope you can better see now. And I'm letting them mix on the paper, but let's try something different. Uh, let's mix them on the palette and see what kind of combinations we can get with these two. So if I mix them on the palette, I get something that looks like this. Very beautiful, uh, deep purplish um, value, I guess. Uh, color, sorry. <laughs> so... I really like the result here, and I'm trying to do this all with natural light, so uh, I hope you can see this well, because I don't want to turn on the light, and the light will turn it all into a big yellow stain, so... Now let's try um, a different mix. Let's take the same um, phthalo blue, so we have it here, mix it a little darker this time, and let's try to mix it up with um, a warm red. So we have the Pyro Scarlet and see what we can get. And this is what I like to, to think of in terms of, to think of this in terms of warm and cool. So we have some of the Scarlet here and let's let them touch. And this is what you get. Uh, let them. I'll mix them a bit more on the palette as well here, just to give you an idea. Um, you can produce some very dark uh, colors and values with this one. Uh, as you can see, this is a stronger mix of the two, because both of them are, from what I experience at least, very strong colors. 
um, like naturally strong. And it's Daniel Smith which turns it even into stronger colors. So in the next mix I want us to try uh, playing around with some of the blue, uh, of the warm blue. So the warm blue I have here is French Ultramarine and it's warm because it's kind of purplish and you'll see it when compared to um, this one, the Phthalo Blue. You see it has this very gentle, I think, purple tint to it. So I'm going to try mixing it up with cool and warm reds also and see what happens. So let's begin with a warm red because this is a warm uh, blue. So I'm going to take a little more of the Pyrrole Scarlet and just dab it in there. And it's interesting, I'm going to try mixing them on the palette itself. From my experience, I did this a while ago just to try and see what it looks like. This is more like a rusty, uh, weird uh, <laughs> color that sort of cancels out itself. This is what I feel. I didn't really like the combination of these two, the French Ultramarine and the, uh, and the Pyrrole Scarlet, but uh, when I'll show you now what happens when you mix it with the uh, cool red, uh, I get a very interesting uh, sort of even Bordeaux tone, I think, or not Bordeaux, uh, but rather purple. We're gonna see it now. The Bordeaux, you can actually achieve this. This can turn into a Bordeaux if you go like really dark with it. I think Bordeaux is the right color. In, in my language, we say Bordeaux, so. So just to show you what I mean, I mixed a darker uh, mixture of this one and I can turn it yet darker than that. I'll just add some more pigment to it. And both of these uh, paints are really, really strong. So you can see, this is a very nice uh, color. I really like this one. It's very deep, very, you can use it as rust, I guess, on metal or as many other things uh, as you want. Let it flow a bit. <laughs> Now let's try mixing some greens. So uh, I'll begin with the Phthalo Blue once again. And I'm gonna use a very lemony yellow to start with. So we have a cool uh, blue and a cool yellow. So uh, let's put in some of that, make it a little more wet even on the palette. Some of this uh, Phthalo Blue. And let's get some uh, lemon yellow. I'll try making a strong mixture, but it's a color, it's a bit dirty on my palette as well, but uh, it's a color that gets very easily contaminated. So here's some yellow, some lemon yellow, and let's mix them up in the middle. And you can see this very interesting mixture. kind of a, a very glowy uh, yellow, I guess. Very glowy green, sorry. And when we play around with the yellow, actually, it has a huge influence on the, where you can get an olive green or you can get uh, more of a sap green, many different combinations. So let's try now the Phthalo Blue, same one, but with the new Gamboche, which is a warmer yellow. So I really like the new Gamboche, the way it looks like in general. I um, really like this color and let's let them mix a bit here in the middle and let's try mixing some on the palette and see what we get um, this is more of an olive green I guess I really like this combination in particular uh, I think the Phthalo Blue and the New Gamboge complement each other really well. So this is a good mix to have. Um, it's really cold now and I'm trying to do this again with the natural light. And sorry about my nose, I have to sniff it once in a while. <laughs> I actually cut the video to sniff it sometimes because I don't want you to hear like that. I watched a video a few uh, days ago and someone was really sniffing hard in that video and it was a bit hard to watch after a while so I don't want this video to be all about that all about it you know yeah <laughs> so anyway now I'm taking some of the French ultramarine a warmer blue 
and let's try and mix it with a lemony yellow see what happens just gonna take a ton of the yellow and just mix them up like that and you can see it's a little different than the warm with the warm yellow when you mix the cool lemony um, Hansa yellow with the French ultramarine you get this uh, brighter I think it's a lot brighter than this one and it's kind of kind of reminds me of sap green this one actually quite perfectly <laughs> uh, let me just grab here with this I really think it reminds me of that one when it's really light but I could be wrong uh, I need to see it next to each other so I, I recently made the switch from um, the cheaper tube paints to the more expensive Daniel Smith uh, that are of higher quality and I can tell you that in terms of the quality sometimes you can get the same quality in certain pigments um, the, the exact same one if you're using let's say the Windsor Newton uh, the Cockman series which is a student grade and the Daniel Smiths and so you can get the similar quality but the main difference I noticed is that you really have to mix the cheaper ones a lot more because it's just it's harder to get the pigment out of them so uh, I, I need to really rub my brush on the palette for example here I have I'll show you I have a French ultramarine uh, from uh, Daniel Smith which is good and then I have this one which is ultramarine blue or ultramarine deep I don't remember of Windsor Newton Cockman with this one I have to really rub a lot of it to get a strongly pigmented one and with the Daniel Smith one not so much so this is they're very highly pigmented that's that's the thing about them and it's much easier for me I don't like to I like to use the palette to actually judge the warmth or cool of the of the color and not to mess around with it you know for hours just trying to produce a stronger uh, pigment so this is one thing they're really good at so the quality can be really similar but just the percentage of of raw pigment I guess is much better in the more expensive brands from what I noticed uh, at least in Daniel Smith I will try a few other ones and see what it looks like so um, now we have all those uh, purples and some greens in the middle. Uh, let's try mixing up uh, some oranges and stuff like that. I think you really like this part. So I'm starting here with a very uh, wet mixture of pyro scarlet. This is just a beautiful, beautiful color. I really like this one. I really like warm reds in general. So I really like this one as well. And let's try putting in some of the new gamboge, which is also a warm yellow and see what we can get here. So I'll be using a fairly wet mixture of that as well here and just put it one next to another and let them sort of mix. Let's try like that also. And you can see it's this sort of orangey gold. I don't know. I don't even want to name it. It's just beautiful. It's very strong, very lively and I really like it. And you can actually get a lot of uh, autumn colors like that, uh, leaves falling, stuff like that. This one, I really like this mixture. And you can actually mix your entire foliage uh, based on these warm um, reds and yellows and it, it can look really good actually. Next up, let's take some of that pyro again and mix it really thick and try getting in some lemon yellow and let's see the difference what we get when we mix the warm blue warm uh, red with the cool yellow so this is interesting so i'm taking some yellow here and you also get this gold one uh, gold yellow type of color i think the difference between uh, these two these two is that this one is really more towards the red because the new gamboge is so warm it sort of leans toward the red more and I think with the lemon yellow you get a little more of a variety now let's let the cool red kick in a bit so uh, I'm gonna take some of the crinacridone rose here and I'm gonna try and mix it up this one actually I really think will work well uh, if you're trying to deliberately use unrealistic uh, colors when painting, again, uh, foliage, 
because let me show you as soon as I uh, get out the I think the hands are yellow the warm lemony yellow um, it has a very nice I'll show you it has a very nice contrast between the two so let me mix them a bit on the palette here and you can see this this sort of color combination I think can work really really well for uh, trees and sort of stuff like that if you want to get it a bit surrealistic or you know like a really interesting atmosphere uh, these two can produce great results for that and I think also if you use the um, quinacridone with the new gamboche the warmer yellow I liked it less so let's let's just take a look at that uh, I'm not sure I think it's really a matter of uh, taste at this point now let me move it a bit yeah so uh, again with the quinacridone rose and let's add some of the new gamboche and I think it's really just a matter of taste if you like the combination or not uh, I'll show you what comes out of it let's just use some water to connect these two now lastly I want to try and show you some grays here so uh, let's take for example a cool red here the quinacridone rose and try putting in a cooler yellow into it and then try putting in a cooler blue onto it and you can see it starts to take on this uh, brownish uh, brownish grayish sort of uh, color uh, let me show you on the palette actually so let's try this with the warm uh, colors here. I'll start with the French, with the yeah, French ultramarine. Grab some of it, mix it here. And when I add some of the pyrrole scarlet in it, you can see it sort of uh, again cancels cancels out each other. A little more blue, so you get this uh, very dim purple, which is great for background stuff like that. Uh, but let's add some of the warm yellow into it, some of the new gamboche and you can see how it's sort of, now the yellow is very dominant uh, let me mix them so that they're relatively equal in dominance you can really take time to do that uh, because they tend to you know overpower each other constantly and you have to match the quantities but what I got now is relatively uh, grayish as you can see here uh, very nice. I love this gray. I use it a lot actually in many paintings. Just the one I did yesterday, I think. Uh, I made use of uh, a bit of that here. Uh, it's more of a brown actually. It has a bit of sepia in it, but still a similar effect. Now let's try maybe neutralizing it even more. So I'll try. I'll put in some blue. You kind of want to see what color is dominating it and then try to use the other ones. And I think this is very red now and now it's kind of yellow. You can see you, that you can get a lot of different uh, interesting weird combinations like that. Maybe I'll pour in some more blue and you just have to play with it and see uh, what what sort of values you like. This one I think is closer to gray. I needed a little more blue in it so now you can really see this. Uh, and that's it! So uh, this is a very good exercise just for understanding what you can produce with your paints because when you get this set um, you, you can see all of these ones but you don't see all the options you get. You can actually see them because they have this thing inside but uh, it's best to experiment yourself and see what produces what. So it's just really good as a study and you can learn what types of uh, paints will work together. It'll just help you uh, familiarize yourself with your paints and their abilities and sort of their uh, range of what you can produce. I want to try and do something similar for these ones um, but this is it. Let's wrap up the video. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, here are the paints after uh, drying. Uh, you can see what I really like about this one, this uh, sort of exercise. Here's something I did uh, a few days ago. So what I really like about this <laughs> is that it's really beautiful. Like, look at it. It's really the mixes of colors are just beautiful and you can keep it and sort of add notes like I did on the one I did a few days ago and so you can refer back to it and really uh, know if you want to get a particular color or kind of how to do it. Um, it's really 
cold now and it's raining and I'm sorry about my nose. I had to actually, I need to apologize to myself too because I'm gonna have to really cut this video and sort of heavily edit it. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat if you want to see more of these uh, sort of studies I do and exercises and also uh, just paintings that I share um, over there as well. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you again in another video.